There's a very strange phrase in this week's Torah portion. Joseph, Yosef, is explaining to Pharaoh via his officials that his father made him take an oath to bury his father, Jacob, Yaakov, in the grave that he had dug for himself. Dug for himself? Yaakov dug his own grave before he went down to Egypt? One of the commentators explains this cryptic phrase as follows. Years earlier, when Yaakov went to bury his father Isaac, Yitzchak, in Hebron, in the Ma'aras HaMachpelah, the final resting place for the patriarchs, he had a dilemma. When there are two people, the more important one goes on the right. So Yaakov should have buried his father Yitzchak to the right of his grandfather Avraham. Because to Yaakov, Yitzchak was more important. But that would be a problem. Because even after death, Yitzchak still owed a debt of honor, kibbud av, to his father Avraham. So therefore Yaakov had to bury Yitzchak to the left of Avraham. Now Yosef shows up with his father Yaakov's body. When there are three people, the most important person is in the middle. Second most important person, on the right. Third most important person, on the left. By rights, Yosef should bury his father Yaakov in the center. He's the most important. But he can't because Yaakov still owes a debt of honor to his father Yitzchak. And Yitzchak still owes a debt of honor to his father Avraham. So Avraham's got to go in the center. Yitzchak's got to go on the right. Yaakov has to go on the left. So Yosef is forced to dig up his grandfather Yitzchak's body, move it to the right of Avraham, and then bury Yaakov on the left in the grave that Yaakov had dug. Hence the mysterious phrase earlier in the Parsha. What's amazing about this is that the obligation to honor a parent doesn't just continue after the parent's death. It even continues after the child and the parent's death. It's unbelievable. If that's the case, then how obvious and how much more so is the obligation while the child is still alive. And just as amazing is the fact that that relationship is still bilateral often, even after the parents are no longer with us. I want to share with you a great story. One summer, one of my sons went on an overnight camp that toured the West Coast in the U.S. So they were in Yosemite National Park, which is as gigantic as it is beautiful. It's the middle of the day, so they get ready to say the afternoon prayer, Mincha. Suddenly a hiker sees them and goes running over to the rabbi who's leading the trip. He says, you're Jewish? Yes. Are you getting ready to do a prayer service? Yes. Can I join you? I'd like to say Kaddish. Today is my father's yard site. The rabbi says, of course. So he joins them. They dive in Mincha together. And afterwards, the hiker says Kaddish in honor of his father's yard site. And then he says to the rabbi, I have to tell you what happened to me last night. You won't believe it. What? He says, I was sleeping overnight in the park in Yosemite, and my father appeared to me in a dream. And he said, son, you know today is my yard site. Are you going to say Kaddish for me like you do every year? And I said to my father, dad, I feel so terrible. You know how important hiking is to me. I booked this trip to Yosemite to stay in the park overnight six or seven months ago, so I couldn't cancel it. I forgot to check the Hebrew calendar. I didn't realize I was going to be here on the day of your yard site. So my father said to me, so you're not gonna say Kaddish today? I said, dad, where in the world am I gonna find a minion at Yosemite? And my father said to me, if I find you a minion, you'll say Kaddish? And I said, of course I will. Rabbi, can you imagine my shock when I saw you and the boys getting ready for the prayer service? So I just imagine after hearing that story, this fellow, the father up in heaven saying to God, God, my son's willing to say Kaddish on my yurt site like he always does. Isn't there any way you could find him a minion in Yosemite? And God's saying, don't worry, I got this.